Like always, doing some gathering can help you clear this quest successfully. Here's another edited map I made. The most important ones in my opinion would be pickaxes in areas 3, 6, and 7, a max potion in area 2, mega potions in areas 6 and 8, potions in area 3, a demon drug in area 7, and a pitfall trap in area 8 and a shock trap in area 4. You can, of course, feel free to gather for anything else you may find helpful, such as the map and paintballs in areas 1 and 2, or whetstones in area 2, etc. There should be a link in the description to this image, as well as a couple of guides not made by me that go into more depth if that's helpful. I want to use the pitfall trap right away, otherwise I may not get a chance to. If he doesn't see you though, he may just leave the area before you alert him. So I run up until he turns towards me, then I put the trap down. As difficult as this fight is, they actually prepare us pretty well. 8 mega potions and an ice weapon. Then it's up to us to play smart. The instructor even says, for each weapon type, that he thinks we're the best and that he has no advice to give us, to just show him what we got. Where the other ones were somewhat guided examples of how you could take on some monsters, this one is basically a challenge. A test to end the G-Rank training. The armor we're given for Longsword has a fate plus one, and we're going to be using it. I have a Rajang video that goes over the fight a little, though being in G-Rank there are some differences of course. Refer to that video if you want a refresher, or a place to start with this fight. I'm running to this area because it gives us more room to move around. There's this area and the one to the south as well. Do not fight any monster in a tight area or a hallway type place. In most situations, it's just going to get you killed. Rajang is resetting. For some reason, he was considered out of bounds there. When he does that backflip projectile, you can follow him and hit him as he comes down. This fight is an endurance test. You need to hit him when there's a small opening, then avoid being hit by his counter, rinse and repeat. In this game at least, whenever you have a chance to hit him safely, take it. Any damage is better than missing out because it wasn't perfect. When you notice him doing that attack, where he slams down to the ground, you need to focus on the sound he's making, then roll right before he lands. Something like that. Be really careful around his beam. Just hit his arms. The hitbox for this attack may hit you if you go for his head. His backhop attack is frustrating. 
I feel like he hardly does it when he's not in rage, but once he is, you need to be very wary of it. You kinda need to play a little aggressively like this, rolling through his jumping slam attack, otherwise you'll miss out on the very few openings he has. He's not in rage now, so you can feel a little safer around his back legs. He can still back hop, but it just feels like it happens a lot less for me. That was greedy. Don't be too greedy. He's now running away. If you'd prefer to use paintballs, make sure to pick them up. But he seems to always go to area 4 from here. It's hard to give advice for this fight, since it really is just a dance of hitting him when there's openings and focusing on not being hit. Try your best to keep calm, find if there's an opening for each attack, and position properly to take it. You're bound to make mistakes, I made plenty in my time figuring this fight out, but you'll eventually piece it together. I hope my example fight gives you something to work from. Notice when I'm attacking him from behind, I'm almost always attacking his back right leg. It makes it a bit easier to avoid his spin attack, from what I can tell. You also never want to attack or be directly behind him, as a backup attack does a ton of damage and is very hard to avoid. When an attack keeps hitting you, or is that dangerous, you need to anticipate it and assume he will always do it when you're in a position to be hit by it. If you assume that you'll be hit by something, you may be more likely to avoid it. Sometimes it is better to be more safe than seems necessary. Fortunately, there's no tracking on that move, or I'd be dead. That was a pretty good visualization of how that move works, though. He back hops, leaves a small dust cloud where he was, then slams down slightly in front of that small cloud, and then lands quite a bit ahead of that. and some people say this is a well-designed monster. Just a joke, but here's his ground slam attack again. He does a grunt sound, then that roar, then lands shortly after. There's a timing there that you can learn. Honestly, this fight seems like hell, and slowly you get more comfortable with it until you're surprised that it's over already. He has less health in this quest compared to the guild hall, so at least there's that. Just keep going, and you'll get him eventually.